Libras, how are you doing? And welcome to your November Meet the Soulmate read for super singles, totally singles, completely Libran singles. Otherwise, check out the heart spread read, which is for the one that's on your mind. <laughs> uh, normally, both of those would be up on Thursdays, but I'm running a day behind, so bear with me. Uh, this is for the month of November, and this is an always positive reading because I'm simply asking the question here Who is the right one for you and trying to get an idea of, and uh, describe them? Uh, look at astrology. So Sun Moon Rising and Venus first of all uh, for you guys um, And I'll call out uh, usually see the Sun and the uh, Venus and Mars and Moon energy here and a personality behavior maybe some personal stories personal history and i want to try to get to know them a little bit uh, so that uh, it's a projected read it's, it should be someone that you don't know yet this is a future read we have november time frame here try to throw it out there ways um give it some space uh back we're given the whole uh, airport we're you know clearing the runways this person can come down and land, and we want to meet them here. Now we're looking at their emotional nature. I'm going to pull two cards for each for their emotional nature. Judgment and the Nine of Cups. And two cards for their intellectual nature. Page of Cups. And the Six of Pentacles. And then here we'll pull the sexual love nature and what I call core values and lifestyle state cards. Uh, these are the four pillars, I think, of a relationship anyway, so I think it helps me give it some structure. And usually here in the emotional nature, I see childhood, uh, childhood experiences. Uh, I see the moon energy. I think they had a single parent. Um, you know, I'm trying to decide how this would work for them. I mean, it, it, every birth is, is karmic. Uh, there's something going on between them and their parent that uh, would be in their astrology, like really tight conjunctions to the, you know, I see or this kind of thing um, in both the, the charts, some kind of double tap, you know, moon on the IC. Um, but it, I, they have a single parent, um, and this would be a parent story, I guess. But I have a feeling they might tell it, they might have heard it. And it would be the story of this child. It's not that your person here, this soulmate, um, um, it's not that they saved the parent, probably the mom, um, but, you know, that could, there was an element of that. Like, uh, when they had, became pregnant with this person, um, they immediately felt like this connection, a soul connection, spiritual connection, a real connection, you know, um, and uh, bonded, you know, strongly. And so they've always had this Nine of Cups and Judgment really strong uh, emotional bond so I'm seeing like sinistry more than anything with the parent probably the mom so I just think it's a Libra moon person and you know the moon expresses us mostly as we're children like they say we express mostly our moon energy so she would have been or this person he or she would have been the kind of person that would have uh, expressed back uh, to the parent uh, what they got you know the libra energy is sort of a reciprocity of uh, but also of not wanting to please the parent you know um so it would have been an interesting situation where this person, even as, as a baby, maybe kind of had a lot of influence over even their parent. Um, 
like uh, the parent, my, again, it's getting more like the parent's story, but um, that they may have had uh, a connection with this person even when they were a baby. Um, and talk about that. I mean, like a real connection. Like a baby could look them in the eyes at an early age and um, was aware of them, smiled and that kind of thing. Um, and in terms of the intellect here, you know, with the Page of Cups, this is where I also read the sun. Um, it feels like a Cancer Sun person. I'd see this Page of Cups. with the Six of Pentacles, Leo, Virgo. They may have a Mercury in Virgo here. And their Libra moon might be found in a water house. Like the Libra moon in the fourth, the eighth, and the twelfth house. Say that. Cancer, Sun, Virgo, Mercury here. So it's kind of stories more like the parent would tell. So I think this person would have grown up too with a parent uh, who was open-minded and um, uh, it, there would be an element in the relationship with the Nine of Cups, if you know the Nine of Cups, where they were like best friends, you know, so even when very young, you know, the relationship between this person and their mother mainly could be a father, but their, their caretaker person, that there was like a more of a friend relationship uh, than a mother-daughter, mother-son relationship in some a way, at a, some emotional level, you know. Um, I'm not saying anything bad about that. So they have a pretty good childhood, uh, ta-da. Okay, so that's a little bit unusual um, in itself. Um, so I think what happens is this person has a lot of intuition and they sort of um, naturally sort of lean on emotional intelligence, emotional awareness, um, but they have this mercury that can be very useful and balanced and practical you know, but I think there's someone that kind of would be open-minded, your person, and so um, you would probably find them uh, questioning you, listening to you, more than talking in the way you interact with them, um, and treating you with the very, giving you a feeling of being heard and respected. Um, remember, that's kind of like, it's almost how, how they were as a child. Um, they were always kind of validating the, the mother, right? Um, and so they would like to do that too with you. Um, and it's all about things being balanced with them. Now let's look at the sexual love nature, really the love and sex nature, the empress. Okay, let's see here in the Five of Pentacles. The Five of Pentacles. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, when you consider it's a cancer person, um, this feels Virgo to me. Yeah, and like the Virgo Venus energy to put them, put a Virgo Venus on them. They may well have an Aries Mars. That's possible. They're Cancer. So you'd have the Libra Moon, uh, fixed air, you know, water, sun, and the moon in a water house, most likely. Um, Mercury in uh, Virgo, uh, and you've got uh, Venus in Virgo. Um, 
five of pinnacles, six of pinnacles. Um, I think Mercury um, and Venus uh, could be technically a conjunction, you know, within two degrees of each other. I mean, they're in the same sign. So, like, they're kind of working together. They would tend to be kind of practical in their values, uh, humble. Humble in the way they speak, so they listen. So they wouldn't say like, well, let me tell you how it is. They would say like, wow, that's that's amazing. Uh, have you ever thought of th this? Or uh, it reminds me of this other thing I heard uh, in some way kind of say things like that. Um, be very pointed, um, but it would also have this kind of Libra quality of uh, being kind of respectful and open to. Um, so kind of a different take on Virgo in terms of being judgmental. But I think they will be willing to take the lead sexually, you know. Um, I don't know about shades of gray, uh, but they won't have any trouble. It'll be, it'll be a fiery sexual nature that they'll have. Um, you know, they're going to want to, uh, you, they'll want you to be pregnant for you. The door closes behind you and you hit the bed um, with this kind of energy. Um, and it's got to be a little bit of a surprise because it kind of conflicts with the Virgo uh, energy which they have both in the way they the Mercury here, the way they speak, communicate, um, just humble, unassuming, um, that kind of energy, um, especially with the Five of Pentacles here. Um, but so suddenly now when it comes to sexuality, uh, you would find them lighting up, uh, being more active, being more uh, attentive, being more uh, live, sort of uh, uh, suddenly kind of animated, you know, uh, as if it turned, well, it turned on, <laughs> it was turned on a switch, um, and um, it would kind of change, um, and that's why, I mean, it would be kind of dominant, so they'd have to kind of like that. Um, and it goes well, we see the sexual love nature going back to the emotional nature. So you have judgment in the emperor, and you have the nine of cups and the five of pentacles. It might be a, a feeling they're your person, they're not perfect. It might tell you if they get to really talking to you. You know, it's a little bit like if they have an awareness of their relationship with their parent growing up, um, they may uh, think in a way with this Five of Pentacles and being their Venus energy, that's like they'll, they'll never have another relationship like that. They'll never be another, whether they're a man or whether they're a woman, you know, they'll never be uh, someone that, I could, maybe we all feel that way, but it'd be really strong, you know. Um, it could even be like, I'll never have a friend like my mother which might be a little different than the way a lot of us think of it. I necessarily think of mom as my friend, but she was kind of my mom. Um, let's see what we get for their lifestyle and core values. Four of Wands. Ten of Wands. So um, with the Four of Wands and the Ten of Wands, um, there's someone that's kind of traditional. Um, I don't know about politically, um, but they're going to want to have like a marriage, white picket fence. Um, I don't want to go ahead and say a nine to five job, uh, but you know, wands is the building of a long term committed relationship. So there's someone that would uh, be inclined um, in terms of any relationship. You know, with the Emperor and the Five of Pentacles, I don't see that either as being someone very promiscuous. So. Um, they're probably pretty choosy about their sexual partners. Um, here, I think this emperor has a lot of sway with them. Um, but they'll be willing to put this work in. You know, you might even find what they do for a living. In their mind, they may tell you, or maybe literally in some way, you know, it has to do with supporting the family or the building of homes, they could be a builder, literally of homes, you know, um, realtor. Um, I mean, this could even uh, be like a reverend or something, 
for a parish that helps uh, the families, a social worker, um, and they're willing to put everything into the work. I don't want to say a workaholic, um, but they're not going to hold anything back. And they're going to kind of be the same way about their home. Like, um, you know, they're, they're not one to settle. They're not one to say, well, um, I want to remodel, but, you know, I don't know if we have enough to really do this. I mean, they're going to, whatever it takes, they're going to do it right because their home means a lot to them. They probably could be someone, they might literally tell you a story of remodeling uh, over numerous periods of time. Maybe something they're called on, called to do periodically, wherever they might call home. So, uh, thank you, Leavers, and do give me a thumbs up. Uh, keep mind to predictive reading. You have to get back to me sometime during the month when this person pops up and say, hey, Dave, they popped up. Uh, thank you.